Kaplan. So, um, but why don't we get started? Mm -hmm. And um, so this is a workshop on um, to hear about the uh, work from the, the green plan, uh, and to just a reminder for the public that this is a workshop. There's council will be taking no action or voting on any items this evening. This is informational to inform the council and the community. Um, and anything that requires voting would, would go on to future agenda. Um, if you do have any questions or comments, um, you can send those to me at dhamilton at ellsworthmaine.gov, um, and I can present those um, throughout the meeting. With that said, I will turn it over, I guess, Aaron, to you. Is All right, so I'm going to share my screen so that people can see the presentation. And if you want to introduce yourself so everybody that's watching knows who you are. Sure. All right, um, so hello and thank you. My name's Aaron Doherty. I'm the Frenchman Bay Conservancy Executive Director. And the screen should start sharing pretty soon. <laughs> um, so while that's loading up, uh, Frenchman Bay Conservancy is a land trust with a mission to conserve distinctive ecosystems, lands, and waters in the Union River and Frenchman Bay watersheds east of the Hancock County line. I'm a member of the Ellsworth Green Plan Steering Committee. And uh, Gary Fortier is here as well. We're both going to present. I'll let Gary uh, introduce himself if he needs an introduction. So thanks for the opportunity to, to discuss the plan. We have a presentation to share, if it loads up. <laughs> Worked so well about a half hour ago. Should I get J the Jason. person to help out? Here he comes. <laughs> and just for everybody that's on, um, connected on Zoom, um, we won't be able to see you while the um, presentation is up. So if you have a question, just speak up. Thank you. OK. <clears throat> Way too many windows open. All I had to do was hit that button that said resume and we were in good shape. Um, all right, so again, thanks for the opportunity to discuss the plan. Um, we have a presentation to share and look forward to hearing uh, your questions and reactions to the work. Um, so first, this is a plan with the city, not for the city. From the beginning of the process, the committee, um, and that is rather small, but let me know if you can't read any of that and I can. First, this is a plan with the city, not for the city. <laughs> From the beginning of the process, the committee. Um, so the steering committee agreed that we didn't want to hand off a set of recommendations or demands or requests and then just walk away. Instead, this is an opening for community partnership between the city council, city staff, and community advocates. So it's a plan to help Ellsworth become a model green community. And this slide talks about sustainability with what is the plan. Sustainability is about nurturing all of our resources today so that future generations can enjoy the same benefits and standards of living that we enjoy here today. Um, so the process uh, started several years ago. We've been at this for now uh, over three years. The Ellsworth Garden Club held uh, an initial scoping meeting in 2017, and that was done in partnership with Mary Black, uh, sorry, with um, Mary Blackstone is here and was the person from the Ellsworth Garden Club, uh, but was done in partnership with Michelle Gagnon from the, the uh, city planning office. And you may see yourselves in some of these uh, photos here, if, if you can uh, see the small images here. Um, and the work was done over three years um, in partnership uh, with the city. There have been green plans in the past, but this process took on a different trajectory with a broad steering committee that included numerous individuals, organizations, and um, city participation, as I mentioned. We hired a professional facilitator who helped to guide the process, and we had numerous uh, subcommittee meetings that all created content. So if I minimize that, will it still say the same size? 
All right, so we hired a professional facilitator who worked with us, helped guide the process. In total, there were well over a thousand people who contributed to the plan in some way through public forums, written comments, uh, meeting attendance, etc. And as we look forward, uh, now that we're finished writing, we're anxious to continue with the doing. So we're here to present to you today because we want to partner with you, uh, city council members and staff, to make this happen. And the plan should be the start of a conversation. So there's a lot of recommendations in the plan. Inevitably, not everyone will agree with all the recommendations. That's why we want your feedback so that you can let us know if you have other ideas for how to help Ellsworth become a model green community. So the plan that we're talking about is a roadmap for sustainability for this community and hopefully also for surrounding communities as well. We believe that, that we can help you accomplish some of your own objectives. Um, every participant has a lot to offer. For example, those of us who are on the steering committee, are uh, we volunteer for roadside cleanups, uh, the Cardbrook cleanup, we run lake and pond associations, we steward local parks and green spaces, and our organizations like Frenchman Bay Conservancy, like Heart of Ellsworth, uh, Friends of Acadia, uh, Downey Salmon Federation, and others that all have different missions but are co collectively working together to make Ellsworth um, achieve this vision. So the take home message here is really about partnership and a common goal. We want the city staff and the city council to leverage your own ability to make Ellsworth a model green community by working with all of us partners and community advocates. So Gary and I can talk more about kind of what we mean by that um, toward the end of the presentation if you'd like. And so hopefully those comments give a little bit more color to this notion of Ellsworth uh, Green Plan as a roadmap. We have a broad vision that focuses on people and the environment. So I'll just... So we have a broad vision um, about people and the environment. Uh, I, I have to go back and forth because I can't, I can't see my notes, unfortunately, when this is full size. So we'll just have to deal with that. Um, and the vision, as it explains here, is a functional, welcoming, and thriving community ecosystem in which people-friendly green objectives are situated within and motivated by attention to the needs and benefits of the full biodiversity of our environment. Um, so the chapters are, are all structured this way. There are uh, four primary substantive chapters and, a, and then a fifth one that comprises a little bit of everything, really the integrations from all of them. So it's about why does this matter? Um, you know, kind of what are the, what are the problems? Uh, what are the goals, objectives, and guiding principles? What is working? What isn't working? What are the opportunities? So basically, what are the kinds of things that we can change? Uh, the four chapters that I mentioned, we've got water, uh, land, infrastructure, which, in, which includes energy and waste, as well as transportation, um, essentially the built environment, um, and food and farming. So I'm going to turn this over to Gary, and he's going to talk about water, and then I'll come back and talk about land. I don't trust computers. I've got my notes and paper. Hi, my name's Gary Fortier, um, longtime resident of Ellsworth. I was asked to be part of this green plan in 2017 by then planner Gagnon um, as a liaison to the city council. Didn't think that it would take four years to get this far, so uh, here we are. My first topic is on water, uh, our Union River and its waterfront. If you look at a map, which is too small to put up here, um, the Union River watershed is huge. And everything that runs into that watershed runs down through this city and into the bay. Um, our lakes are more important, not just Branch, but all the other small ones around Green Lake and parts of Beach Hill Pond and stuff. Um, we started out in the water with um, our, the own, our own vision on the water. 
And that's our shared community vision is for an Ellsworth that values and has access to thriving aquatic ecosystems and abundant clean water in its river, streams, lakes, and aquifers, all of which are enhancing our region's present and will strengthen our future. Um, unlike land, they make water every day that it rains. Uh, but we still got to take care of it. We've got to keep it clean. We've got to keep it accessible. Um, drinking water and water quality. A lot of our work, or the committee's work, in the water process was uh, centered around our branch lake, or I call it branch pond, uh, watershed, because that's the public drinking water for the urban core. Um, there's a lot of recommendations that we'll cover at the end with some value to them. Um, testing, um, lake smart approaches, stuff like that. But that's one of the most important uh, objects that we would like the city to muckle on to is taking care of the quality of, of that impressive lake out there. Healthy lakes and ponds all over Hancock County, as I spoke of. Revitalization of the Union River waterfront and watershed. Uh, in our surveys, majority of people answered yes, it's very, very important, or yes, it's important uh, to have a healthy river. We're also looking at sustainable stormwater management. Uh, as some of you guys and gals that have been here for a long time, that collection system is old. It used to be the combined sewer overflow that took our sewage straight to the river. It was repurposed as a stormwater when the new system went in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, it needs a lot of work. Uh, if you remember, a few years ago we had a collapse in the middle of Main Street on one of those systems that uh, disrupted downtown Ellsworth for quite a while. I think I got one more tab on that one. Right so one of the objectives of the water resources is to upgrade natural and human-built stormwater infrastructure to maintain and improve access to the water, enhance community engagement capacity. The way to do some of this um, in this chapter is to develop a comprehensive water quality monitoring system, dam safety inspections, database and library uh, housed at the city website for all this information that's collected. Also I'd like to look at developing a network of towns, lake associations, and other interested organizations to help not just Ellsworth but the region maintain this water quality. Um, I already mentioned water quality and monitoring of Branch Lake. Uh, this is one that we've talked about, I say we, this room, City Council has talked about for the last 20 years, is pave all the public roads and improve the culverts in the watershed of Branch Lake. The phosphorus getting into Branch Lake is one of the biggest problems we have, and if we could find a way to systematically get those roads paved, the ditching and the culverts done right, I think that your water and superintendent would agree that it's a lot cheaper to prevent pollution than clean the water afterwards. So that's a very important uh, step to take and it's going to be expensive. And facilitate, we can't as a city do it ourselves, but facilitate the improvement of private camp roads and, and uh, other roads around Branch and Green. Uh, Brook is another area that the, our water chapter talked about. Um, you all know that DEP is going to put a consent agreement eventually if we don't do something about the quality of water uh, going into Union River down there. Uh, one of our projections or recommendations later in the uh, presentation is an amount of money to, to fund some challenge grant to get that done. 
one of our biggest uh, partners on this around Branch was Branch Lake Water Association. Um, they are having, we're proud to announce, a comprehensive watershed survey that they are doing. Uh, I believe it starts May 1st at the lake. Uh, all that information will be supplied to the public. Uh, we'd like to see that continue. So I'll turn it back over to Aaron for land. On the topic of water, I, I lived on uh, in Franklin on George's Pond for, uh, for a year, and I'm sure you've all read in the paper about the problems they've had. Um, so that's one of those cautionary tales that we want to avoid with the uh, nitrogen runoff that Gary was talking about and the eutrophication in the pond and the fact they had to treat it with alum and cost a lot of money and so forth. <clears throat> Bear with me just a second. Well, I think unfortunately you're going to have to see kind of a small slide for uh, for just a couple of slides here because I do want to be able to see my notes so that I'm not rambling on too much. Um, on the land side, we focused on a, a set of recommendations, and I, I want to share with you a sample of some of the recommendations. It's not comprehensive. Um, if you want to see all of the recommendations, uh, check out the plan. It's on greenellsworth.org, and uh, all the chapters are there. Um, it's laid out very well. and um, so the focus really for, for tonight is on the higher level uh, strategy since you, know, you are all the city council um, and, and staff. You know, we didn't want to get into the real weeds. I think the way that this is going to be, uh, you know, hopefully work if this is something that the city of Ellsworth embraces is you, know, you have the option here to, to set high level strategy, uh, which is what you do, and then we can cover some of the more details. And of course, you can look at all those details, but we can work on specifically, you know, what, what culverts are, were the priorities from the plan, for example. And I think that's something that's, that would, you know, would have uh, conversations with Lisa and Jana and others about. So a sample of some of the recommendations. <clears throat> um, we we'll want to involve the public in planning discussions that focus on balancing development with conservation so that we can maintain the character of the city that we all want. An example of this is the build-out analysis that Frenchman Bay Conservancy did. Uh, just recently, we worked with a contractor that looked at the entire city. Um, I did a webinar on this a couple months ago, actually with Jana in partnership. And um, the build-out analysis showed what the trajectory of growth is for the city. So it looked back 25 years and said, okay, we've added this number of buildings. If we go 25 years forward on the same trajectory, or if we have compound growth, what does that look like? And, and so that's the first question is, what does it look like 25 years from now? And then another question is, how long does it take Ellsworth to be fully built out? And usually when you're presented with that information, you take a look at it and you say, well, that's not a city that I want to live in anymore because it looks like suburban New Jersey. And it's a very different culture, very different um, aesthetic feel than what we have in Ellsworth today. So it, so it leads to a natural conversation about what do we want to protect and where do we want to build. Um, on that topic, we want to protect natural green infrastructure because that land already saves us a lot of money and provides services like clean water and resources for forest products. Once we're clear on what we want to protect, one of the recommendations in the plan is to conserve 50% of Ellsworth's land in some fashion. And that includes open space, farmland, tree growth, or other current use taxation programs. The number may or may not seem high to you, but it's uh, already 40% is enrolled in current use taxation programs like tree growth. Um, permanent land conservation definitely plays a role in that as well. Both FBC and, and now uh, Blue Hill Heritage Trust um, were two of several uh, land conservation organizations that own land within the city and have that land open for public access. We want to allow the increase in development density within the downtown area. So as we're talking about conserving some of the outlying areas, where uh, we do have actively managed forests or open space, um, at the same time the city can continue to grow with more development through density in the urban area. And retree our city at the same time, making this a more livable community, revive the city's Arbor Commission, for example. 
public landscaping. So we've looked at both public spaces as well as private lands. Um, we want to appoint a cemetery board responsible for developing and overseeing a best practices management plan for historic cemeteries. As an example, we said this was comprehensive. We even talked about cemeteries. Uh, trails and corridors, we want to update the bicycle and pedestrian plan. We know that this is something that the uh, planning department uh, has focused on in the past. I think it originated in the planning department. We'd like to see that continue to, to develop. City leadership and land use management. We want to undertake a comprehensive revision of the Uniform Development Ordinance and other city codes, regulations, and zoning and enforcement mechanisms. That's a mouthful, but, and there's a lot there. It's planning that, that is tied in with the comprehensive plan, uh, not at the same time, but it's another element of planning that's going to be essential for the community. And then we also acknowledge private stewardship, given the fact that most of the lands in Ellsworth are privately owned. There's a major role for uh, private landowners to steward their own properties. Again, we said this is not entirely for the city, but we're trying to cover some of the pieces that um, fall to the city tonight. Community access to land and water is another element. We want to make sure, we, we're blessed with a lot of water here in Ellsworth. We want to make sure that to the extent possible, people have access to that for recreation um, and also um, open space opportunities. The next chapter is food and farming. We'd like to protect existing farmland, including by conserving prime farmland soils. Uh, there are designations both at the state level and the federal level for prime farmland soils. <coughs> And that information is available to anyone. Um, so the, the planning department has it. We have it at Frenchman Bay Conservancy. Maine Farmland Trust um, also has that information. So we can help identify some of the, the most <coughs> highest priority soils um, that you want to protect. I mean, those are great soils for development. But once you develop it, those lands are no longer available for farming, obviously. And that, that doesn't go back. We want to use the Maine Farmland Trust's farm-friendly test to help identify how to develop and improve municipal support through zoning and development restrictions for farmland protections and economic encouragement for farming during the next comprehensive plan update. Some of this information was included in the last comp plan, but the last comp plan, as you know, was a, was a long time ago, and I, I know that there are conversations to get that going again. Um, the third bullet I want to cover here is recruit farmers to serve on the planning board. Uh, I've had a number of conversations with area farmers. Um, Cara Romano and I have talked with farmers in the area thinking about what we can do to help support the farming community. This is one of those concrete things, you know, just getting the farmers, getting the people in that business involved in some of the planning that affects them. Um, and then finally, integrating farming and agriculture into the curriculum in Ellsworth schools. This just makes good business sense uh, to nurture the young people who want to do this work. So those are a sample of some of the recommendations that are included in these couple of chapters. And I'm going to hand it off to Gary again to talk about uh, infrastructure. Here. Infrastructure for this purpose was split into three distinct groups, um, transportation, energy, and solid waste. We had three separate committees working on it, um, and we'll start off with transportation. Some of the goals of the transportation group we're reducing traffic congestion, better controlling truck traffic. And I think it will surprise some of you that this group came up and one of the action plans was stop talking about a bypass, let's get it under control. Which surprised me because I figured it was going to be bypass. The overall goal was to strengthen and promote greener and more sustainable infrastructure in Ellsworth. Um, one group took care of um, bicycle and walkability, did a c comprehensive survey of sidewalks and bike lanes around Ellsworth. They came up with um, recommendations that we need more of each. Uh, we need a program to uh, maintain the sidewalks at a regular basis. Uh, I had a long discussion knowing that uh, former Chair Blanchett and the DOT Commissioner 
walked Oak Street and had a really good discussion, I assured them that that sidewalk project was in your brains already, just had to get DOT to step up and work with us. Because uh, that was one of the major points they talked about was that stretch of road and how pedestrians were unsafe there. Um, themselves, they have done uh, crosswalk inventory highlighting public safety issues. Came up with what they call a high street dem pedestrian demonstration project, which is trying to figure out how you get pedestrians out high street to the top of Beckwith Hill, to all the housing units going out on the corner of Beachland and Buttermilk and Bar Harbor Road, and to Walmart safely, and how do you get them across High Street? Because the only crosswalk on High Street is the one at one High Street right here by the Catholic Church. There's no more all the way out High Street. Um, they want to increase access to public transit. Um, that would be one way to get them safely there. Uh, look at the get around function of the bus. Is there a more secure, more efficient loop through town to take people to places? Uh, as I said, designate more bike routes, increase and extend walkable trails. Some of the things that they want to accomplish by 2031, a comprehensive transportation corridor study, develop, coordinate, systemize improvement for traffic flow, which I believe uh, your IT director Ingalls is uh, already on that uh, with all the new controllers he's talking about in the, in the uh, traffic signals. Restrict truck traffic to roads that aren't designed for them. There was a big conversation about keeping dump trucks and oil tankers off Christian Ridge Road. Um, and I reminded them of a morning when an 8,600 gallon fuel tanker came down over Bridge Hill, lost its control, wiped out three cars at Surrey Road, came across the bridge, wiped out two more, took a hard right-hand turn on the Water Street to miss the school bus stopped in the middle of Main Street. And I reminded them that I was there. I think Chief Mosher and I talked about it. He remembers it. Now, rebuild Christian Ridge Road. Don't, don't keep the trucks out of downtown. It's, um, another one of those issues was uh, engine brakes, Jake brakes. I believe that's a national safety highway transport question. Another chapter in this, another part of this chapter is energy. That's the one that I signed up to, to be part of. Uh, the reduction of use of fossil fuels, foster municipal solar initiatives. Thank you for approving that contract with Sunrays. I would love to see them up there cutting trees pretty soon. The next step in that is I personally have talked to the owner of Sundog Solar. Uh, he's doing a project with me on Christian Ridge Road uh, about a community solar initiative. He's really interested. We will be in to talk to you about the use of the abandoned landfill out on Union Street. Uh, they've done four or five huge projects in the state of Maine on landfills and I'd do it. They've got good rapport with, but it'll probably go out to bid, but at least they're a good uh, brain to pick on it. A subject that I believe Council Blanchett is uh, involved in right now is greater use of electric vehicles. I believe he was at a seminar or webinar with Efficiency Maine uh, I think they've probably got some announcements to have coming up pretty soon on that. Um, it's uh, incredible to see how far you can go in a Tesla from Arizona all the way to Maine and never have a problem finding a charging station. Um, my brother-in-law did that and 
the systems are coming, uh, and Ellsworth has got to get on board, and it sounds like uh, private enterprise is going to take care of that. A while back, um, when I was still on council, we partnered the Ellsworth Green Action Team, which is the energy portion of this group, partnered with National Resource Council of Maine to do house housing audits and uh, insulation upgrades. It went fairly well. Um, this group would like to see us continue that every couple of years um, because the air that you push out into Ellsworth that doesn't have to come out of your house is costing you to heat. Um, so if we can find a way to lessen your energy usage, hopefully more um, general assistance money can go with other things instead of fuel. We'd like to get a program going to educate the public on alternative energy sources. Uh, a lot of rebates out there with heat pumps that uh, I believe they're getting ready to double uh, those to try to get some work going this spring. We'd also like to see the city uh, create a city level energy advisory committee. Bring in some of the experts that know and, and pick their brains about alternative energy, what systems will work in Ellsworth, what don't work in Maine. Um, The final part of chapter four is on solid waste. I think Council Phillips, you were there 15 years ago, 18 years ago, when we had a conversation at that table that if we don't get a hold of the solid waste issue in Ellsworth, it's gonna eat us alive. Well, it's already taken its first bite with the new Hamden plant delay until June, end of June sale current closing for the most of the month of April. Every bit of Ellsworth trash is now going to go directly to a landfill. And in the state of Maine, that's not the hierarchy. The hierarchy in solid waste written in statute is reduce, reuse, recycle, compost organics, incinerate for energy, and the very last is landfill. Because of no mistake by us, or you folks, we're going directly to the bottom of the pile. We as a group would like to see Ellsworth find a way to increase its recycling program lessen the use of plastic statewide or worldwide actually, um, expand the composting program at uh, Maine Organics, try to find some way to get residential um, activity up there. Expand grassroots cleanup efforts. We have Hadbrook roadside cleanup develop public education on managing solid waste. We haven't done that for a few years. We'd also like to see reconstitute the Solid Waste Committee. Um, so there's some public input on that program. That's all I have on solid waste. I think you and I are going to yeah, we'll do this together. We'll stay up here together. Um, we just got a couple more slides, and then uh, we want to hear your questions. The final chapter is about integrating actions, and the image that you see up there is uh, an illustration of some of the integrations. Um, you know, when you think about a, a challenging issue like stormwater, for example, it's got an element of planning in it, it's got an element of land in it, it's got an element of water in it. Those are some of the systems that we're talking about in integrating actions. Um, so an integrated approach 
uh, natural and human systems overlap, and uh, we want to ma maximize ecosystem uh, services, and I think stormwater is one of those examples. Uh, we're certainly dealing with uh, stormwater issues at uh, Frenchman Bay Conservancy, and I think increasingly we're all going to deal with those problems. So overarching recommendations, again, these didn't fit into any one particular chapter, but it's you know, adopt a sustainability framework, so think about this comprehensively. Appoint a sustainability coordinator so that you have the resources for someone to think about it comprehensively so that it is someone's job to think about this specifically. And we recognize this costs money. You may not have the, the, the staff person to do that right now. Maybe it's an existing staff that takes that on over time. Ideally, it would be, it would be great if this could be a, a position. Um, the city to update the, the 2004 comprehensive plan. Um, one thing that I would say about that is when I have talked to city staff before and shared some opportunities about grant funding opportunities, I know that um, if you don't have an updated comprehensive plan, it's harder to get those. And so this is one of those examples where doing that plan actually opens up the door to getting more money into the city. Uh, revised land use management mechanisms in light of green plan recommendations and un undertake a fisc fiscal impact analysis. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to move on. Anything else you want to say about any of that? Mm -hmm. okay. So we talked about stormwater management, public education. There's a lot in there, but I would like to kind of move along because I know you've been listening for a long time and I want to get to questions. Um, work with the public schools to support environmental and sustainability curriculum. I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Create a county-wide sustainability network. This is a chance for the city to take a leadership role. Uh, you know, it's, it's the, the hub of the county service center hub, um, and so there's an opportunity for Ellsworth to take that leadership. An action plan for a green future. So there's a, a variety of appendices. I won't go through all of these. Um, all of that reference material is online. Just one thing I'll point out that's very important on this entire plan. We didn't put out a wish list. You look at Appendix 2, it has a full listing of all the recommendations. It proposes a responsible party. It lists the necessary resources that we feel you're going to need for it. It lists the possible sources for the resources, for the source for the resources, let's say the money, and a timeline for action. So this is a very methodical, thought out appendices. And when we get done with this, I'll share a few of the recommendations that we feel are probably the biggest ones that the city's going to grapple with. A lot of these are going to come from private grants, um, partner organizations, but um, Mary Blackstone, our, our fearless leader, uh, has sat down and gone through the plan and picked out the ones she thought um, were most important for the city to look at. So I'll go through those when we get done here. All right, so there are a number of participating organizations. We mentioned some of them in the beginning. Numerous individuals contributed to the plan. Um, there are a, a lot of small sample projects. I'm not sure that we necessarily need to go through all of these at this time. February 8th, I stood at this podium and gave them an update, and I think I listed okay. um, all, all of these smaller projects that we have accomplished as a group. Okay. And so I'm going to wrap there. We could always come back to projects if we want later, but I really do want to uh, be aware of the time and just make sure to open this up for questions from you all and comments. Um, like I said, some of the projects that we're looking at um, under the overarching considerations which we just went through the last portion of it, the most important by far is the comprehensive plan um, for reasons that Aaron has mentioned. And as most of your budget documents, this was sent to you on January 22nd for inclusion uh, in your budget book. We gave you two years of projections. I won't read them all. Um, 
but there's some in water, some in land, uh, infrastructure, um, and the same next year. Uh, I can, if you folks remember seeing that, yeah. If not, I can forward it to the chief or to the manager now um, for distribution. I won't go through them, but. So why don't we take questions? Yep. Aaron, do you want to um, stop sharing and then that yeah, way sure. everybody that's on Zoom will reappear? All right. So, counselors, if I only have two public comments, to, to, if I could read those first and then field your questions. Um, first one is from um, Denise Hugh, who is a CPA in Ellsworth. Um, Dear Council, City Planning is successful when there's cooperation among community organization stakeholders and community members. Broad community support for and planning for the long-term sustainability of the community is a difficult thing to accomplish when the city's resources are stretched among competing needs. The Green Plan provides the perfect opportunity for the city to benefit from a highly organized community initiative that has the support of nonprofits, the business community, and some very dedicated citizens. The Green Plan builds upon many projects that the City of Ellsworth has already undertaken. Since there are many areas of common ground, I'm writing this letter to make three recommendations to Council. First, that the Council and City Planners work in tandem with Green Ellsworth moving forward. Second, that the Council recognize that the Green Plan is an important ingredient that can inform a long overdue update to the City's comprehensive plan. Third, that the Council consider the Green Plan specific recommendations when working on the City budget. Thank you for your time. And then uh, Heidi McCormick raised a question. Is part of the food and farming going to incorporate a food sovereignty ordinance to be enacted in Ellsworth as well? So with that, Councilor. I, I, I don't believe that this organization is trying to get political, and I think that's a, a political question. We'd have to take it back to them on food sovereignty. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'd... Um, I'll ask Mary if you can unmute. Can you answer that? Uh, there is no food sovereignty rec recommendation in the Green Plan. There are many issues that it attempts to address in a different way that are related to that particular agenda, but it was consciously not included in the Green Plan. Thank you. Questions? Hey, I got one. In the beginning, you said a thousand people worked on this and here it says nearly a hundred contributed to the consultation. I mean, out of all them people, how many people are from Ellsworth? Uh, well, I might hand that over to Mary in just a minute, but um, the people, the hundred reference is probably the committee uh, participation. We had about ten different committees, and we had a lot of people in each of those, so we we lumped together um, the, those ten committees into the four chapters. Um, the thousand people that I mentioned was attendance at public forums, attendance at webinars. Um, a lot of them were Ellsworth residents. Uh, we didn't, you know, check their residency at the door, so I don't know which people came from which communities. But you know, it's friends and neighbors, people that you recognize, as well as many that you don't. And overall, it's a lot of people in part because it took a long time to put it together. Mary, do you want to answer that one? Um. I can, I can certainly, as a long-time resident of Ellsworth, and uh, given the fact that I recognize a lot of people from Ellsworth, I can tell you that um, we have very strong participation from the city of Ellsworth. Um, the surveys, we, we did two um, online surveys. Both of those asked for postal codes, so we can see exactly that we have good participation there from the city of Ellsworth. Uh, when we had written surveys, we did, this is the 25th public forum uh, that we've presented um, either in the process of consultation or in rollout. And um, for many of those early forums where we were taking people's input, there were actually written survey documents that were circulated and returned in those forums. We had um, very very clear participation in those uh, survey documents also from people in the city of Ellsworth. So um, we certainly didn't stop people at the door and ask them if they were from the city of Ellsworth. 
Ellsworth's responsibility as a Shire town and hub for the county means that we also want to welcome input from people outside who don't live in Ellsworth. A lot of people work in Ellsworth. Uh, they have opinions too about what Ellsworth should be like. And so those we certainly felt should be taken into consideration. So I, 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 can I build on your question? Um, sure. I, just, I, I want to ask another question that's related to that is just in terms of um, in reading, I read through the whole plan. Um, obviously, a lot of the initiatives and a lot of what we're talking about is connectivity with other communities. Um, and in fact, one of the recommendations is to have a, I don't know if the steering committee was the right term, but bring together other communities. I'm curious how many communities, municipalities you have approached with the same presentation and the same interest in terms of their um, commitment, especially as it relates to um, financial support, or is this just um, being presented to Ellsworth? I believe we've only done Ellsworth. Um, if we can't get Ellsworth, there's no sense of getting anybody else around us. Yeah, you get the gold star though for reading the whole document. <laughs> and I highlighted too. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, we're working on putting together the Reader's Digest version for you all. Uh, just in case you don't want to be the overachiever that Dale is, but uh, we do encourage you to read the whole thing if you got the time. We get, we get paid to do this. Yeah, right. Good. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll skip the short document then. Well, as I as I said in my comments, if you remember, the Union River watershed encompasses a lot more communities than just Ellsworth, and that's one of the places, unfortunately, where the water comes into Leonard Lake, just outside of Ellsworth, is crystal clear. From there down is mud. So they love the Union River in the northern part of Hancock County. So yes, we'll, we're going to have to get input and conversation from outside communities. We can blame half that on Waltham. I think they own half a Grand Lake. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, Council Lines. Yeah. Well, I was. What I like to get figure out is, I mean, like how many percent of Ellsworth residents who have actually taken part yeah. in this. I mean, there's 9,000 people right. approximately oh, in Ellsworth, and uh, how many of them are actually involved, because in the end, it comes down to it's their pocket that's getting dug into. Uh, so I'll take that. I think that's it's a good question, and I'm glad that you're raising it. I, uh, I don't know the answer to it, and I think that we've answered about as well as we can just in terms of who has participated so far. Um, I, I, I'd be really curious if you went out in the community and asked people if they've heard about the green plan, you know, what percentage would say they have and have a favorable response. I think we've been lucky enough to get some good coverage in the paper about it. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the press certainly helps, but the participation in meetings has been good. We haven't asked the question, uh, or maybe somebody has, but I, I haven't heard the question asked about how much people are willing to pay. Um, but the first question that I would ask is, do these services really matter to you? And when you talk to people about clean water and open space and access to water, you know, overwhelmingly, and it's not just Ellsworth, it's, a, it's a, across the country, you know, those are things that people support. So then we got to have the hard question, we have to have the hard discussions about, you know, how much are we willing to pay for the things that we really and truly care about. Um, so, it, you know, to go more than that, I, I just don't have a lot of detail, but I'm glad you raised the question. I'm a uh probably from a different, you know, I'm not around the offices and I'm not around, you know, I'm out in the field and I talk to people who, you know, live paycheck to paycheck and yeah. they're general consensus and I have asked, um, they love it as long as it doesn't cost them anything and as long as you don't tell them what to do with their land. Right. And I mean, that's a pretty big portion of Ellsworth are people that work in right. the paycheck to paycheck, you know. Mary, did I hear you say something? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't want to interrupt the counselor though, mm -hmm. so do, do, do finish what you were saying. I did have a, something to say. He says he's all set. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, you know, I, I think I've been paying taxes in the city of Ellsworth since I was nine years old. I won't go into how old I am now. But I'm a long-term taxpayer, let's put it that way. And 
For me, I see my taxes to the city of Ellsworth as a straightforward financial transaction. In any financial transaction, I'm not interested in paying more than I need to for the services that I receive. But at the same time, when I, when I do pay, I want to make sure that the best use is made of my money. And I just want to observe that it's really important for everybody on council to read the details in the second appendix. The third section under every single recommendation identifies a source for the resources that are needed. Now that doesn't mean that the city is not cited because if you're going to apply for money from outside the city to pay for some of these projects that we're recommending, then the city needs to come forward. It needs to have skin in the game. But at the same time, as a taxpayer, I want the city to develop a process where it regularly looks at its tax dollars as an amount of money that it needs to multiply. I want it to see those tax dollars as an investment in a business, the same, same sort of thing you see in a business, and that it regularly take that money to multiply it by applying for money that comes from outside the city. So I'm a long-term taxpayer and I care about how much taxes I pay. I also care about how the city is multiplying those tax dollars and what is what the services are that they provide in return. And I think a lot of people are standing in my shoes from that standpoint. Mary, how much money have we spent on this process? And so we have, we've raised over $200,000. And about how much is that tax, how much is that tax dollar? Zero. And none of it came from within the city of Ellsworth. What we're proposing here is for the city to take advantage of a major new initiative that is happening across this country and the world. Greening is a major new initiative, not just in terms of preserving our biodiversity or whatever, it's a major business. And if the city, El city of Ellsworth adopts this plan, then it's also adopt adopting an economic future that could be much greener and greener in both senses of the word than it's going to be otherwise. One of the recommendations that came out of our online consultations with this draft uh, report, uh, one of the changes or additional recommendations that we're going to add uh, to the draft document in, in finalizing it is that the city needs to review its economic development plan with an eye to adopting this green perspective as a major opportunity to recruit new, good-paying businesses to the community. Thank you. So let's keep going. I, other questions? I haven't heard from a lot of people. So I want to just make sure just, we cover everybody. I don't hear well, just to clarify. She said you raised $200,000, and then she said none of the money came within the city of Ellsworth. It was not no. taxpayer dollars, is what she was saying. It was it was grant money. That was the point that she was making about mm -hmm. leveraging taxpayer dollars to get grant money and you put that to use within the city. I think that was the point. Um, other questions? Is the grant money taxpayer money, even if it's from the federal or state level, or I mean, somebody well, just dug in their pocket and gave the money? Yeah, it was it was private foundations. Um, so. So I printed off the appendix one overview of the, the recommendations. There's 183 recommendations. Um, Gary, you know how fast the city moves in making, it, it's hard to get things moving and, and this, is kind of, this is overwhelming for me um, to see this whole you know, and I understand it's a 10 year project. Um, so I guess what I would have to see is a, you know, give us a five year plan. What do you, and, and what does that look like for the city? In dollars and cents, time, staff usage? I mean, I, I, can't, I can't take these 103, 183 recommendations and put it into to an action plan because 
to me. I can it's... email you a two-year plan. That's what we've started with. Okay. For sit projects we believe the city is right to do or is responsible to do. Okay. So I will email that to everybody tomorrow. Yeah. All together. Or I will email it to the manager's associate, uh, administrative assistant. She can distribute it. So it's on the server. Thank you. And just to add to that, too, um, I just want to echo the point I made earlier about, you know, the focus at the council level on the big picture strategy. 180 recommendations is a lot. The decisions that city staff make every day and every week and every year are, are a lot, too. And so, we, you know, we're trying to dovetail with that not pile on a lot more work if that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I invite more conversations with people like uh, like Jana uh, and Lisa and others to say, okay, how does this actually get done? Are we in agreement on the vision? Are we in agreement on the basic goals? If you don't want to do this culvert, but you want to do that culvert, great. Mm -hmm. you know, so you, so the, the recommendations um, might be a little bit fluid. I think what's most important is that we're in agreement on the big picture. I just counted very quickly. The next two years, we've got 18 of those 183 projects. Mm -hmm. But the biggest one is the comp plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Because that leads everything. So one, one question comment that, that I have is just in, in relation to um, there, no one's going to argue, I don't think anybody would argue about clean water and um, the, there are a lot of basic things in here that I think everybody would agree to. The, the reality is that how you get there and what people want to do, there's going to be disagreement. There's not going to be 100% agreement to saying, let's take this plan, we'll adopt it outright um, because a group has put that together. And, and so to me, this is about a process of bringing the entire community along and finding ways of common ground, of what can we do together versus um, the expectation that, boy, if we don't accept all of this as a community, then it's just going to be fought with a lot of um, adversity right. uh, or, or animosity. And that never is successful. So I, I guess my comment is that I would hope that that is the spirit of which this is being put forward to roll it into the comprehensive plan to engage other members of the community to say, what is doable? What is possible? How do we move the needle in a positive way um, versus trying to get stuck on all or nothing approach? You got it. We, that's that's the, the roadmap analogy. And the metaphor might be overused at this point, but you know people choose a different path to get to the same destination. I would suggest, Mr. Chairman, that we don't want you to adopt it. We'd like you to acknowledge the receipt of it and agree to utilize it as you make decisions down the road. You don't have to agree with everything we do, or is on here. I never, I, I told someone the other day, I said that to me is gonna stretch into a 15 year plan at 70% success. 70, um, yeah. which is Which is great, I mean that, but if you don't shoot for the stars, you're never gonna make it to the moon. Yeah, and I was, and I, I said this the other day on a call is, the composition of this council changes or has the opportunity to change every single year. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's not about us. We can, at this group, can decide some things for this next budget year and for the foreseeable future, but then another council, this is really about the community. And, and that's the piece that, that I'm referencing is that, um, and why I asked the question about other communities. This is a regional effort and Ellsworth, just because we're the largest city um, in the area, it should not take on the full responsibility. And I would say that the community can't afford to do that. There's a huge price tag. And I understand that there's grant dollars. And we should leverage every, every cent we can. Um, but at the end of the day, there's also other needs that the, the city has and unmet needs that the city has. Um, and that balance of, that you talk about in the plan about making sure that everyone, not just certain segments of the population, that everyone benefits from this plan, there's a tipping point where you can go too far that you actually leave out other members of the community because it becomes n not affordable for certain parts of the community to participate. So we need some rich conversations. We need to be able to 
have different opinions on this and listen to different perspectives if this is going to be successful as a community to meet some of the basic goals that I think we will all agree to. Agree. Dale, if I could just interject here, I, I thank you for those comments because it's, uh, it, it, what, what you said is really reflecting the content of the plan and the goal behind the plan. Uh, probably most importantly, it's to activate the community, all members of the community. So those 183 recommendations, only, uh, only, certain, only certain ones, of recommendations that the city government and city staff need to be responsible for. There are lots of other recommendations that relate to that networked responsibility across communities and the responsibility of citizens uh, and, and partner organizations. And really the city, it would be nice if the city were supportive, but it's not something the city needs to take leadership on. So an important aspect of the plan is that it is a full community, a whole, as, as we've called it in the plan, a whole community responsibility, not just a certain segment, not just government. Um, so I just want, want to say that, and a, a second point is that every single chapter begins with a set of principles. Those principles are what determine where the, the objectives flow from the principles. And so the recommendations may be specific to action, de depending on where our committee set down as to you know, what the particular uh, follow-up should be to those principles. But in, look, in setting out those principles, we've created something that city council um, and Green Ellsworth and other partner organizations could come to set together and say, okay, we embrace these principles. How we get to the actual objective and the action, how we get to that, uh, achieving that principle, that's a different matter. And so this is not meant to be a rigid plan that you, we have to march down the line and tick off the specific recommendations. It's to start a conversation and a, and a community action. Other council members? Well, we thank you all for your attention. Appreciate the opportunity to come in front of a workshop. And uh, you all have our contact information. Good. This is still in draft form. Uh, final writing is being done. Uh, so if you've got some conversation you'd like to see in there, please let us know. And I will um, send you that to you. Okay. There's one you can read tonight. So I just want to uh, receive a comment um, and uh, from Roger Gilley. I am, Roger, I will pass on your comment to um, Lisa. Um, it's, it's his comments regarding the Christian Ridge Road and some a need for some attention there is a little bit different than this workshop, so I'll pass that on to Lisa for you. Anything else, counselors? I do want to say, I mean, I think it's really, it's, a, it's an awesome plan. I love that you have so many people involved in it. I really love the fact that you included the schools. I think it's important that you do it, that you educate the kids, yeah. because they're the ones that are going to have to deal with what's coming up from, from our actions. And... Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, when I, this, the recommendations, it's awesome how you, uh, you have the project start dates and um, who's going to be needed and where the funds are going to come from, but um, just when I see 183, yeah. just. <laughs> we'll start with the priorities. <laughs> yeah. Well, one, one thing so. folks, someone said to me tonight, there's a lot of redundancy. Each chapter had its own writing group. So that's why you find some of the same information in Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 4. They can stand on their own. Each chapter can stand on their own. But we brought it together and left the redundancy in there to show that this is all intertwined. Mm -hmm. To which, be successful, we need to be successful in all of them at different levels. Which is further evidence that I read the whole plan. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
We are adjourned.